Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Across Nation. And for today's video, I wanted to go over something that I think will help out quite a lot of players, um, especially because of the fact that I feel like a lot of players aren't aware of what I'm about to show you guys or even do, let alone do that, which will overall, assuming you actually choose to do it, um, will help you identify which of your medals are actually your strongest medals and that sh in turn should help you better make stronger setups in general. Now I'm sure it's happened to everyone at least a few times which is where you'll have quite a few cases where you have like two medals or more that you're just not sure out of all of them which ones are your strongest medals now normally of course we're all aware that every medal is categorized in terms of like how strong they are amongst each other that's the whole point why i have like my spreadsheets on my website and such okay to help show that difference like we we all know for example that a hd aqua ex vanilla wise anyways is stronger than a prime illustrated roxas for example in their vanilla based state we can all understand and agree on that. However, as is the case with, once you start going to more personal aspect, uh, once traits and skills start getting thrown into the mix, then it can start hitting a bit of a gray area as to wondering, well, out of my medals, okay, the ones that are supposed to be stronger, are they actually my strongest? And that's kind of what today's video is supposed to help elaborate on and actually how to figure that out. Now, if you're like me, chances are you already have a album set up on your account at kidtruextracker.com, okay? Um, I made sure I have, I try to keep it as up to date as possible and like here's my album for example. I haven't added some of my latest medals to it but for the most part this is my album. There is a feature on the site called album damage value right here if you click on that that sh will actually show you which of your metals will actually do deal the most damage okay um however the issue with this is the fact that it's taking into account uh traits skills multipliers and the metals abilities into account for what i'm going to be presenting you guys it's going to be everything that this sorting option gives you minus the actual abilities. So what we're gonna be trying to figure out is which of our medals actually has just purely the highest multipliers. And when I say multipliers, I mean like their overall multipliers with their skills and traits. So like for example, if I click on TR18 over here, all right, it normally has a multiplier of a 36.23 to a 40.19. However, that multiplier is not taking into account the attack boost six skill that I have attached to it or the extra attack or raid traits trait that I have attached to it. And so, and those alone obviously can dictate whether or not this is going to be stronger than my other metals or if possibly my other metals are gonna be stronger than this one, all right? Because um, the multipliers we are given are solely just off the vanilla version of the metal itself. Now, don't worry. I've already spoken to Rosie about this quite a few times already. And there will be a feature at some point in time where we can actually organize it based purely off the overall multipliers of our metals without taking abilities into account. However, because of the fact that, you know, making websites does take a lot of time. In the meantime, I'm hoping that this video can help you guys out to try and figure out which of your metals uh, are actually stronger from a multiplier perspective rather than a standalone perspective that the website provides, okay? Rosie, if you happen to be watching this, please, by all means, take your time. Just because I made this video does not mean you need to rush anything. Uh, I just want to help everybody out in the process where, in the meantime, until you have the time to work on that feature, uh, everyone can help benefit from this video. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use Photoshop just to like make it a little bit easier to explain things like I did in some of my other videos. Now, quick warning, there is going to be a bit of math involved. <laughs> Um, but I will do my best to try and explain it as easy as possible for all of you guys to be able to keep up and such, okay? So the main formula that you guys need to know in order to figure out how strong your metals actually are in terms of multipliers anyways is going to be this formula right here that I'm going to put on the screen, okay? There we go. It is going to be your 
special attack value, your your multiplier of your metal, times the guilt percentage of the metal, times the skill multiplier of the metal if it's an attack skill. Um, if it is an attack skill, it will state literally in the description what the multiplier is. Like it'll say it does times two damage or times 2.2 damage or something like that. Like it'll, it'll say it in the description. Uh, whether or not it has EA, I'll go into that in a sec on how to calculate that, and whether or not it has raid traits and how many of them if you are trying to look at it from a raiding perspective, okay? And all of these together will give you your overall, overall multiplier of the metal, okay? Now, a couple examples just to show how exactly to use this formula just to, so you understand, okay? Uh, let's quickly go look at my end game, which is where I'm going to show you guys two metals that I have. I have HD Aqua EX, okay? On top of, I also have a Prime Illustrated Roxas. So we have both these metals up here. Normally, okay, for a based vanilla HD Aqua EX, she will have a multiplier, a total max multiplier of a 40.44. A Prime Illustrated Roxas, like a vanilla Prime Illustrated Roxas, will have a base vanilla multiplier, total max multiplier of a 35.90. So in a normal vanilla base value, your HD Aqua EX is going to naturally be stronger than your Prime Illustrator Roxas EX. But this is where the equation comes in handy, okay? Because obviously my Aqua EX Plus, I mean not Plus, my HD Aqua EX and my Prime Illustrated Roxas are going to have um, at least some skills, if not some traits involved as well that could determine the outcome of this. All right, so we're going to figure this out. For my HD Aqua EX, the special attack multiplier is going to stay the same. The guilt is 200% because she's a tier 7 metal. All right, and this is where we're going to be talking about the, the skills. She has attack boost 5 max and Lux plus Plux. 5 max means, and I'll show here in a sec, that she literally has deals times 2 more damage. All right. And for her metal, she has no traits. So in terms of the equation, this is what it's gonna look like. Just like I showed in game, her special attack multiplier is 13.48 against a single opponent, I should probably add. Her guilt percentage is at 200%, okay? Her guilt percentage is at 200% because she's a tier seven metal. Now in math terms, you can't just put times two, all right? That's not how it works. Because realistically in math terms, a multiplier of like time zero for example let's say you have no guilt percentage at all whatsoever that's the equivalent of saying times one okay that's the equivalent of saying times one so let's say 50 percent let's say you have 50 percent guilt okay that's the equivalent of saying one point times 1.5 it, it's literally increasing one point x where x is the actual amount of guilt that you have okay so at, let's say a tier 3 metal has 100% guilt, that actually means a times 2 multiplier. The same way how 50% guilt just means that you're grabbing 50% of the original multiplier and adding it to the original multiplier. A times 100 multiplier means that you're grabbing 100% so all of the original multiplier and adding it on top of the original multiplier, which is the equivalent of times 2. All right, so if we have a times 200% guilt bonus, such as the case with tier seven medals, that is going to mean that it's going to be a times three multiplier instead, which is why we have that times three multiplier right there for guilt, okay? I know, confusing stuff. Some of us haven't been to school in a while, uh, whereas quite a few of you might still be in school. So hopefully this, this isn't like flying way over your heads. <laughs> All right, but moving on, this part right here, this is the skill multiplier. Like I mentioned before, she does have a attack boost five max, which means she does times two more damage. So like it literally says in the description, you're gonna multiply it by two. That's the skill multiplier, all right? And now for EA and raid boss traits, okay? We're just gonna leave it at times one within the equation, unless you actually have those traits, in which case I will go over that in a second after this example. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep it as times one because she has neither of them. Uh, but overall, taking all of these into account, my HD Aqua EX does have an overall multiplier of an 80.88.
Now, my prime illustrator Roxas, on the other hand, let's go ahead and take a look at that. He has a high-end multiplier for his special attack of a 14.36, has a guilt bonus of 150% uh, because he's tier 5, of course, and he has a skill of attack boost 7 max, which means, I know it's just dis here in a second, there it is, times 2.4 times damage, all right? So if we plug that into the equation and we show that, right? So we plug that all in right here. He is going to end up having an overall multiplier of an 86.16. So realistically, what this means is that my prime illustrated rocks is actually stronger than my HD Aqua EX, okay? Now in the past, I probably wouldn't have known this and I would have pr most likely have thought that my HD Aqua EX was going to be my stronger metal just because of the fact that she's tier 7 and has a similar tie-in multiplier anyways, okay? Like, like quite, quite easily, okay? This, this 13.48 is not too, it's like a one point difference between uh, 14.36. It's, it's like, it's like a 0.9 difference or so, which I would think that maybe the extra... 50% of guilt bonus might make up for that and make her stronger. Okay, some like that's what that's what I'm thinking here. Okay, but I wouldn't actually know this unless I plug it into the formula and figure that out. In which case, I find out that my Roxas is actually stronger than my Aqua. Okay, it did like this is the whole reason why we're using this equation to find out which metals. Uh, and in the past, because of this assumption, I might have ended up trying to use my Aqua as a main damage metal instead of like using my Roxas because he's actually stronger than Aqua. Now, one of the main reasons why situations like this, for example, can occur for a lot of you guys out there, uh, where you might find cases where some of your metals that you thought were weaker are actually stronger than some of your stronger metals, uh, it's going to come down largely due to what skill you have on them, okay? If you recall, my HD Aqua EX has a attack boost 5 max, so it only has a times 2 multiplier, whereas my Roxas has a attack boost 7 max as a 2.4 mul multiplier. Quite literally, these skills alone made the major difference as to why my Roxas is stronger than my Aqua. Because quite easily, if, uh, for example, I happen to have an attack boost 7 max on my Aqua as well, and we made that a 2.4 for attack boost 7 max, instead of an 80.88 multiplier, my Ro Aqua would actually have a multiplier of a 97. 06, okay, which is clearly stronger than Roxas over here. Um, and that's that's just going to show you guys like how much of a difference the skills can actually make towards your damage metals. So that right there was an easy example to show you guys like how exactly does the formula work on top of like how to use it properly. Uh, now, the next thing I want to show you guys is in terms of like how to actually use extra attack and raid boss traits, all right? Uh, I'm going to show you guys one of my medals, for example, that has both extra tech and raid boss traits, right? Well, we'll go ahead and take a look at my Lexius Plus, which has an attack boost 5 max, uh, is a tier 8 medal, so has a 230% guilt, has a max uh, like a like a high end multiplier of 14.01, and has both extra tech and two raid boss traits. So in the equation, this is what it looks like. So we have the multiplier of the metal right there of the special attack. It is a tier eight metal. So it has a 230% guilt, meaning that it's gonna be a times 3.3, all right? Just to make sure I explain this part in case any of you are wondering before I explain the next bit of the equation. Um, in case your metal happens to have a booster of some sort, so like for example, my Lexius has a booster of plus 40%, this is how you add it to the equation. You know how we have the guilt multiplier right here, so it's times 3.3? You just simply add the, bo the booster to the guilt value right there, because realistically, even though it shows it as like two separate numbers right here, realistically, it's just being added together as just one big guilt multiplier okay so in that case you just take the 230 percent plus 40 percent overall this is a plus 270 percent guilt bonus okay that's that's basically what this is right here with the booster involved so in that case in case of the of the equation you, you just plug it in like any other guilt multiplier so instead of a 3.3 with the 40 percent it's just a 3.7 um, so that's how you do that 
It has an attack boost 5 max, meaning that it's going to be times 2 multiplier, because it says so in the description. Now, because of the fact that we do have EA this time, all right, if we recall, EA does state that it's an extra 40% power. Right, it's literally an extra 40% of the original power. Meaning that in the equation, so rather than multiplying it by times 0.4, because it's extra, you're doing it times 1.4, all right, for the equation. If you do it times 0.4, what you're actually saying in the equation is that uh, how much is 40% of this entire equation rather than, rather than saying, I wanna add 40% of the original damage to the damage output. All right. So you have to do times 1.4. Uh, and the same thing applies to raid boss traits because of the fact that we do have two raid boss traits who both do plus 40% extra damage. You have to do the exact same thing. The only difference being that instead of keeping them separate like these two right here, uh, you can actually just add them together same, since they're, they are the same exact trait. Okay, So you just do 1.0 if you have no raid boss traits. And for every raid boss trait, you just add 0.4 to it. Okay. You just add 0.4 to it. And overall, that will equal whatever this raid, raid boss uh, number is going to be. So for two raid boss traits, it's 1.8 because you're adding 2.4s to it. Uh, if you have three raid boss traits, you're adding 1.2 to the raid boss section. Okay. Let's say, for example, you happen to have five raid boss traits. All right. That's going to mean that five times 0.4 is going to equal two. All right, so this number right here would actually be a three because one plus two equals three. And overall, my Lexius Plus against raid bosses is going to have an overall multiplier of a 233.01. Please keep in mind that if you are including the raid boss trait in the equation, that is assuming that you're fighting against a raid boss, okay? This is not going to be the multiplier that you're going to have if you're not fighting a raid boss. If you're not fighting a raid boss, don't include the raid boss traits, all right? That's probably the only trait you have to ignore in terms of the equation if you're not fighting a raid boss. This is how you use the formula in terms of extra attack and raid boss traits. Now by now, some of you guys probably have some questions in terms of like how exactly does this, like how do you take traits such as plus 1000 attack or you know plus 2000 defense or even minus 60 traits, uh, how do you take these aspects into account? Basically, the easiest answer to this is that in terms of this equation, you can't because of the fact that this equation only takes like only looks at the metals multiplier. And because of the fact that these traits aren't actually dependent off the metals multiplier, but are actually more related to uh, the opponent's defense instead, you can't incorporate that into the equation. Minus 60 defense literally takes off minus 60% of the opponent's defense. It doesn't affect your multiplier of your metal at all whatsoever. Same thing applies with like plus 1000 strength, for example. That doesn't actually um, change your metal's multiplier. Granted, it will help you do a little bit extra damage compared to if you didn't have the plus 1000 strength, but with or without the 1000 strength or however much strength you have, it's not gonna change the actual overall multiplier that your metal's gonna have. And realistically as well, the way that this game is built is that the metals with the highest multipliers tend to be your strongest metal anyways. Uh, the plus 1000 or even plus 2000 strength or something like that typically won't make too much of a difference unless you have two metals whose multipliers are pretty much super close anyways. In which case that might be one, be one of the few times in which you might want to actually consider looking at like strength traits as well as minus 60 traits just to help make that slight difference in decision making. Hopefully this ends up helping a lot of you guys out. I know it did, I, it significantly did for me. Uh, granted, it is going to be a little bit tedious until Rosie can get around at some point in time to actually providing that uh, feature update that I mentioned before to let us organize purely off our metals multipliers and not, not have abilities included at all whatsoever. And the whole reason for that is simply because of the fact that maxing out all buffs and debuffs within the game right now is way too easy that the main thing that we ever really look at at this point in time anyways is pretty much just the multipliers of our metals uh, to determine our strongest setups and our strongest metals, which is the whole point of like why I'm basically doing this video. In case you happen to be thinking about it as well, this will actually help you guys be able to determine which of your metals are actually worth evolving to seven stars as well. I'll get asked quite frequently 
like from people like out of which of their medals which ones are worth to evolve into seven star and if you actually just use this formula right here taking their seven star multipliers into account you can actually very easily figure out on your own which of your medals like hardcore find out uh, which of your medals are actually going to be stronger compared to each other just by using this formula if you end up asking for more in terms of like which ones are evolving based off abilities that's something to discuss in a later video now granted because of the fact that we are going to have to be doing this on our own for the time being uh, that does mean you're going to have to end up remembering in some way shape or form whether it be on pencil paper or like on a notepad on your computer or something uh, to keep track of which your metals like what their multipliers are so you don't have to like recalculate them every single time um and easiest like one of the easiest ways for me personally is just simply using like excel to do the math for you you can just plug in some numbers and it does the math for you um or google sheets if you know how to use that now of course if you're not as tech savvy to be able to do all of that um or to know how to do that in the first place you can always just go back and use original pencil and paper to figure that stuff out as well you guys can see here that th this was pretty much my piece of paper that I had that I wrote down everything uh, for my medals before I ended up using it, putting them on my uh, my Excel online spreadsheets and stuff for myself. Uh, but you guys can do the exact same thing to figure out. Um, if you choose to do this, I do recommend uh, separating them between AOE medals and single target medals. Uh, and for metals that can do both, so like HD Aqua EX, for example, that is an AOE metal but does more damage against single target opponents, I would include them on both sections of the spread on your like little sheets of paper, whatever you record them on, um, but use the low end of the multiplier for the AOE section and the high end of the multiplier for the single target section um, simply to help you guys be able to figure out like which of your metals are stronger for those different sections because like for pvp for example you're most likely going to want to use just the single target metals for pvp whereas you're going to want to use like aoe metals for other stuff like coliseum or just anything that requires a aoe <laughs> but other than that that was it for today guys by all means let me know uh what you thought about this in the comment section down below did you find it useful did you not find it useful were you even aware of this in the first place but other than that if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe and hit that bell button it is the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian, thank you so much to you, Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.